Hey everyone, welcome to another top 10 list. This week's top 10 list is not necessarily currency. Uh, these are the top 10 random items I had in my safety deposit box. Uh, so there's a lot of metal in this one, but there's some paper too. Uh, it's just interesting because whenever I go through my safety deposit box, I'm always looking for particular notes. And some of the stuff just ends up migrating toward the bottom. <laughs> so I decided let's clear out this box, see what's down here. And let's take a look. All right. Number 10. I hear this bouncing around all the time. And this is a silver ring. Uh, it's 9.25 silver. You can see EA on there. You can see it's got some type of logo. This is from Imperio Armani. And I found this at work. <laughs> Walking from the parking lot to the main building. Uh, this was laying in the street and I picked it up. And, uh, yeah, it's all scratched and tarnished and everything else. But it does say 925, nine so that means it's 925 silver. If I look on the inside, you can see here, it does say Imperio Armani. Then I looked these up online at the time, and I think these were like $100 or something. I don't know. This one's all scratched up. I can't imagine it being worth $100. But just in silver alone, well, it's still got to be worth something, right? So, yeah, I hear it bouncing around in my safety deposit box. That's number 10, my Imperio Armani found silver ring. Number 9. I have a reel, and it's pre-cut into pieces of 8. So, for those of you who always were interested in pirate stuff, <laughs> a reel is what they were using for trade and since they didn't have change they would actually cut the reels into pieces they would cut it into up to eight times uh, and th that's what this is it's pre-cut eight times it's not real this is just a replica but i always thought it was neat to have this uh pieces of eight in eight pieces actually i think i've tried to line it up many times and I i'm not even sure those are all from the same coin to be honest eh, maybe they are but i mean the cuts are just really I don't know. I always found this neat. That's why it was in my box. Because you hear about pieces of eight. You never see them. <laughs> I got a replica. What can I say? I didn't pay much for it, but it's still pretty cool. That's number nine. Number eight. Along with other useless oddities. This is a new Nixon penny. As in... Richard Nixon. Yeah, this is pretty old. <laughs> Nixon penny and getting smaller and smaller. Some of you feel that this is what's happening to our money now. No, this is what happens all the time. Everybody always says, oh, our money is worthless. Oh, it's... But anyway, this is a Nixon penny and it is just very, very tiny. Um, Let's see. In my infinite wisdom, I did not bring anything to compare the size. I do have a dime here, so there's the dime and there's the penny. You can almost see it. it it's actually got Nixon on it. You can't quite make out the year. Boy, is that tiny. Yep, can't make out the year. Maybe you guys can see it on the screen. That's about as close as I can get to get it to focus. Still, Nixon penny and getting smaller. The constant joke of our money always being worthless. So for those of you who say a dollar isn't worth anything anymore, yeah, you're not the first one to say it. You're not the first generation to say it. Uh, you're probably not even the first century of people to say it. It gets old. <laughs> anyway, that is number eight, 1098. Number seven, we'll go with what I actually had in my hand next. Uh, this is a grease punch error. 1991D dime. And you can see there the... Well, for those of you who collect coins, you're probably familiar with a grease punch. You can see all these little divots and ridges and stuff there. It just did not take very well because there was too much grease in the die. At least that's how I know of it. And you can see on this side as well. And uh, yeah, I thought it was neat. I haven't done anything with coins in eight, ten years or so. And this just happened to be in my box. So that's what I pulled out. A potential grease punch error. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But it was in my box. I figured I'd show it. 
nine, eight, number seven. Okay, number six. I actually have stuff that's kind of cool, too. <laughs> I got this when COVID hit. This is my MK Bars Global Panic 2020 one ounce coronavirus global economic panic pandemic gold bar. Yeah, all of that. I got this from MK Bars and I was I, I was impressed by the labeling that they have here as well. Uh, because their label specifies that they only minted 50 and this particular one, instead of numbering it, is listed as a prototype. Uh, 25 version 2 prototype 3. So that's cool. <laughs> I didn't expect to get a prototype when I bought it. Probably paid way too much for it, but since I got a prototype, maybe I paid way too little for it. I thought it was cool, and uh, it still sits in my box. Probably not selling it anytime soon. I just think it's neat. That is number six. Number five. I, I'm i just going 50-50 on these because I'm not sure which one of these two I should show first. We'll start with this one. Uh, I have an 1885 about uncirculated Morgan silver dollar. One of the things that fascinated me when I first started collecting, I, I liked, I really liked Morgans, but I was always blown away by how this could be considered AU. Because as a novice, I would look and see this is just dirty, nasty. I'm used to seeing these bright, shiny coins being called about uncirculated. And this one, to me, I'm like, no, that's not about uncirculated. But uh, yeah, circulation has to do with the wear and damage, not the dirt. So I don't know if this is toning or what, um, but I always thought this was pretty cool. And you can definitely see there's a whole lot of detail in there. A little bit of a scratch on her face there. A couple scratches, maybe. Checking out the back. Once again, there is a little bit of toning on there. And this one is just from Philadelphia. I have no idea off the top of my head. I, I do have my book. I don't even know what year book it is, but let's see. 1885. Should we take a peek? What do we got? 1885. VF20 is 30. Okay, so it's nothing special. I always just was fascinated by this one, more so because of the next one. This one was number five. We'll go with number four. And this Morgan Silver Dollar. When you look at the two, this one looks much brighter, much easier to see. It looks like it's been cleaned versus this one that is all dirty. But when you check out the highlights, this one is so much more detail than this one. But this is an 1878 Morgan Silver Dollar. And I'm sure there's probably a difference in, what was it, the feathers or something? I should probably have known this beforehand. Uh, this particular one, though, as you can see, is a Carson City. So an 1878 Carson City, in my book, which is way old, uh, starts off at 125 and goes up from there. I'm sure it's not that great but yeah i thought it was neat having a carson city 1878 let's see i'm just trying to see if there was anything i should know yeah there could be seven feathers reverse second reverse yeah that's way too much for me to figure out so i will simply put it up here for you guys to determine and if you want to pause it and count feathers what do I see? One, two, three, four, five. I count six feathers. So I know I'm doing something wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nope, seven feathers. Right? Yeah, seven feather variety. That's what that is. And what is that? I'm just looking on here. Don't even know. That's how little I know. <laughs> I have this simply because it's a Carson City. So that one is number four. Number three. I have, which should I go with next? Here, we'll go with some paper. I have $200 worth of small head $5 bills. Um, <laughs> the fact that I have $200 worth of small head $5 bills, this is just $200 laying here is all this is. Most of these are modern and most of these are trashed. 
but they still sit in my box. Most of these, like I said, 1995, you can see here, a lot of them have writing. None of them are in very good condition, but for some reason, I just can't seem to get rid of them. Not that I was trying to get rid of them. I can't mentally release them. I think it's neat to have this $200 strap of five, so there it sits. I've never tried to do anything with it. It's just there. Like I said, this top one's even ripped. <laughs> but yeah, I feel bad about If I was to spend these, I know that they're going to be sent away and shredded because they're just not in that good of shape. But on the same token, I know some people just don't have these. So the, the collector's dilemma. What do you do when you have something that's too cool to throw away and not worth anything to sell? It goes in a box. So this has been sitting in my box. That is number three. Number two, I don't know how well this is going to photograph, but uh, I do have another coin, and you can see this side is pretty slick, and unfortunately that is the obverse, and the reverse is only slightly better. What you can see is of America right here. And I'm just trying to go by what I can see through the lens, because I know that would be what you guys can see there. This, on this side, is actually a draped bust penny. That's what this is. I cannot get the year, but as I go like that, you can see the figure, you can see the head over here, you can see the hair. I just think that's really cool. No idea what year it is. Yes, it's damaged to all. Heck. Let me bring out my coin book. And for those of you wondering, when I say let me bring out my coin book, <clears throat> that's how old my coin book is. So if we look at large cents, let's see if I can find it in here. Here we go. Ah. Uh, the draped bust from 1796 to 1807. There is what it's supposed to look like. And, of course, there is mine. So hard to see anything on there at all. Very difficult. But, yeah, you can kind of see this portion here. Kind of. Yeah, I can't even figure out which ends up right now. But <laughs> I didn't pay much for it. I know you can't tell what it is. If it is what I think it is, it's the oldest coin I have. If it isn't, it's still a coin, and I just don't really care about coins anymore. But at the time, I thought it was neat. If you guys know anything about it, you can tell me. <laughs> That's number two. And finally, number one, I have my four-ounce silver bar. My four-ounce silver bar, this is actually... A bar of uh, a $1,000 bill. This is the Grand Watermelon. And that's just pretty cool right there. Seeing the Grand Watermelon in a 4-ounce silver bar. Once again, something that just ends up sitting in my safety deposit box. So that's as close to a Grand Watermelon as I have. Yes, I do have a replica, but I think this is much cooler than the replica. Series 1890. $1,000... Er, $1, uh, treasury note there. It says treasury note there. You can see in coin. So yeah, something not everybody's going to have, that's for sure. Very cool bar. And uh, that'll do it. That's my top 10 random assortment of things that has been in the bottom of my safety deposit box. A little bit of paper, a lot of, well, not a lot of silver, but a lot of, a couple interesting coins. Yep, random stuff that I've come up with. I have some great ideas for some top 10 lists coming up, but I have bought some stuff that I have to show first before it can show up in a top 10 list. So that is why we got a little bit of coin this week. All right, guys, if you learned anything new, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like what you see and you want to see more, please subscribe. Love reading all your comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.